Anytime Visionary Realms creative director Chris Joppa Perkins makes an appearance, there's a potential to hear some really interesting information about Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. And the most recent developer roundtable was one such occasion. So let's go over the top news that you should know. This is Buzz Grimm TV. Learn, blah, level up. This dev roundtable featured not only Joppa, but also game designer Tim Convo Wathen, and together they covered a wide range of topics. They took questions directly from fans, and it was one of the most informative roundtables in recent memory, so I'm excited to tell you about it today. But if you've been following my channel, you know that I like to keep the information about Pantheon as organized as possible. To be clear, I'm not a developer, I just follow the game closely, so... I'm not going to do a comprehensive review of the entire roundtable today because, well, for one thing, the video would just be too long and too confusing because there's so much important info. So I'm going to take each main topic that was discussed in the roundtable and spread them out across multiple videos over the next few weeks or so to cover each one separately. That way, the context doesn't get lost and it'll be quicker and easier for you to find the particular information that you want to know. So, if you're not already subscribed to Bazgrim TV, do that now by clicking the button below so that you don't miss any of those upcoming videos. But for today, there's one big topic from the roundtable that stands on its own and is very important to anyone that's interested in the game. And it has to do with NPC AI. Now, I know that's a lot of acronyms, but more importantly, we're looking at this tenet from the Pantheon website. Quote, a belief that an immersive world requires intelligent inhabitants, end quote. This is something that in my opinion anyway, a lot of MMOs have struggled with over the years. Nothing makes a game more boring than NPCs that just blankly stare while their friend is getting massacred 10 feet away. But Pantheon claims to be more of a living world than an actual game, and that won't be possible if the computer-controlled inhabitants don't act almost as if they were controlled by other players. So, how are the devs going to make the NPCs intelligent enough to react dynamically to their surroundings in a believable manner? That is the big question. And the aspect of this that probably most people are interested in is specifically how the NPCs will behave in combat and how that relates to the overall degree of challenge that the content presents. So, that's what this focuses on, and let's start with the basic building blocks. Uh, will NPCs of a given class have the full toolbox of skills, spells, and abilities available to player characters um, of the same class and level? Yes. Okay, great. Nice and simple. Now, that's a good start, but there's a huge difference between just having abilities and knowing how and when to best use them. This, in particular, is the thing that a lot of MMOs have struggled to get right. Because, for example, anytime you kite a mob and it continues to helplessly run in circles, it makes the game less challenging and less believable. But, when was the last time a mob tried to kite you? You're, you're gonna see wizards, for example, doing what wizard player classes will do. If a wizard NPC runs out of mana, they're going to switch to their magic line to build that mana back up so that they can they can keep keep going. So um, that's that is a when when we're ready to really showcase that, we're going to showcase that really heavily because that's a very important piece. We'll do we'll have streams devoted to that. Um, and it's something that will continue to improve and improve and improve. Um, so yes, you can definitely count on that and no don't take what you may have seen in streams or experienced in testing before as an indicator of, of how far and how deep that's going to go. Now let's take this a step even further. I recently released a video explaining a mechanic in Pantheon by which players can apply different conditions or states if you will to NPCs which then unlock different aspects of their own abilities and the abilities of other classes when used on that NPC. This is a pretty deep system that allows for a lot more strategy in how and when you use your abilities to respond to the current situation. But that of course begs the question, does it go both ways? 
will NPCs have the abilities and the know-how to take advantage of this mechanic as well? For the sake of time, simplest answer is yes. Uh, NPCs will have ways to in, to cause states on players and will also have different means to take advantage of those states. Um, and environments will do that as well. Uh, the, I was, again, when Kama and I were talking before the round table, we were talking through the wind shear climate and how um, you can expect to find yourself in a wind-swept state like the one we talked about on the shaman stream uh at, at different times while in a wind chair climate as well as the npcs that happen to be there with you and so um and you as players and npcs will both also have uh ways to take advantage of that when it happens um against one another so yeah it's it's, it's again very very um exciting part of the combat system to see you know that evolve and uh having it being able to to see it with players and with npcs both is going to make for some pretty uh pretty exciting pretty tense pretty pretty interesting encounters for sure so now we're starting to see how strategic these fights could really get but there's that word again strategy I feel like it gets overused and sometimes loses its meaning, so just to make sure we're on the same page here, let me remind you what it actually means. In game theory, strategy is, quote, any of the options which he or she chooses in a setting where the outcome depends on not only their own actions, but on the actions of others, end quote. Those actions of others are not only those of your team, but also the opponent you're trying to defeat. So in a battle against computer controlled opponents, as their list of possible actions increases, so do your options for countering them. Think about it, when you're in combat, you're coordinating your abilities either on your own or with your group members to try to take down the high priority targets and gain the upper hand. So again, let's flip this whole scenario on its head and talk about the possibility of NPCs being able to intelligently respond to your class and group composition. You saw a little bit of that in the Tower of the Reckless Magician stream um, where the certain classes were being targeted and focused by the NPCs. Um, and you're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more of that kind of stuff. And just like Combo was saying, it. it it's going to be a lot of fun to roll some of that into the dispositions where, you know, you have a, like a, like he said earlier, like a healer hater or, you know, like a wizard slayer kind of disposition where, um, it's not just that certain NPCs are, are sniffing for healing spells and trying to counter those whenever they happen, but you've got dispositions that actually like kind of put in these particular dispositions completely on like the, uh, just relentless warpath against wizards and they're immune to taunt and you just you just can't do anything about it except kill them. I mean, you just think like the Terminator you know, after your wizard and you just, you just have to figure out how to put it down um, seeing things like that in dispositions, especially when you're not expecting it, um, is again all part of that you know, refreshing kind of dynamic um, zone NPC encounter design that uh, dispositions are gonna are gonna create for us that's all for this video. I really hope you learned something from it. But remember, there's a lot more excellent information from this roundtable. If you want to watch the whole thing through, I will provide a link to it in the description below. But for those of you who don't want to parse through an hour and a half long podcast, I'm going to continue to break it down into more easily digestible parts. So definitely keep an eye out for that in the near future. But until then, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.